Beach Street, two people have been shot near the house you see behind me. The shooting happened just before 4 o'clock Friday. Police received the call and rushed to the scene and found two males were severely injured from gunshot wounds. The status of their health is currently unknown as of news time. I spoke with multiple residents at the scene who say they did not know what happened other than hearing multiple gunshots going off. Iberia Parish Sheriff deputies, Generate City Police, and Generate Marshals were all on the scene. Assistant Chief Marshal David Robertson says there's still a lot of moving parts to the investigation. Right now, we're processing the scene, and, and uh, the scene right now is under investigation, and that's uh, where we stand right now. I really don't have any other further information to provide to you at this time. If you have any information on the shooting here on Peach Street, please contact law enforcement as soon as possible. Here in Generette, Dawson D'Amico, KLFY News 10. At Dawson, an Abbeville man has been booked into the Vermilion Parish Jail under charge of solicitation for murder. 75-year-old Jerry Marcombe is accused of hiring a man to murder two of his former tenants. Police say he became friends with a potential hitman and let him in, live in a house he owned after being friends for a while. Police say Marcombe reached out to the man and asked him to kill two people. That man was arrested weeks ago after a police pursuit by the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office. He later confessed to what Marcombe asked him to do. Marcombe was being held on a $200,000 dollar bond. Meanwhile, U.S. officials say the federal government has been hit by an online ransomware attack believed to come from an extortion gang operating inside Russia. Washington correspondent Trevor Shirley is in D.C. to bring us more. And the good news in all this, U.S. officials say the lasting impact from these attacks is not expected to be too severe. Officials say neither the U.S. military nor the intelligence community were impacted. However, parts of the Energy Department were hacked through a compromised file transfer program. Cyber officials say despite the size of the attack, it was relatively short-lived and caught quickly by officials. They say it was nowhere near the size of last year's massive solar winds hack. Multiple state agencies were hit as well in Louisiana, Oregon, and Georgia. Several private sector companies also fell victim. Those include British Airways and the BBC. It's believed the impact on private sector and state level victims will be worse than at the federal level. That could include the illegal sale on the dark web of personal data obtained through the hack. Officials believe those responsible are operating out of Russia, but at this point, there's no indication that the Russian government was involved. And officials in the cyber intelligence community say they are continuing to investigate. Reporting in Washington, I'm Trevor Shirley. In light of the recent OMV cyber attack here in Louisiana, we spoke with the Better Business Bureau about ways to help protect your privacy. President of the BBB, Chris Babin, says the question now shouldn't be, has my information been compromised? The question should be, how can I protect my identity? Babin says it's time to move into protection and self-preservation mode to protect yourself. What we would recommend as consumers at this point is you have to have a way to monitor your credit because if your identity is compromised and lines of credit are open in your name or scammers are using it to get money, um, you know, you have to be able to monitor that. That way you can see some of the signs that your identity has been compromised and is being used by scammers. Evan says to make sure you vet the company you use to monitor your credit. He says you can also freeze your credit with the three major bureaus right here in Acadiana. Well, new gruesome discoveries on the death of a new Iberia Arby's manager. As News 10 first reported, 63-year-old Niet Lee died after being trapped inside the restaurant freezer, and that was back in May. Her family is now filing a $1 million wrongful death lawsuit. lawsuit. News 10 Britt LaFonto spoke with the family's attorney who inspected the Arby's this week and is now telling it all. As soon as they opened the door, I just, I got a feeling that I, didn't want to be in there with the door shut. It immediately pierces your clothes. Your clothes go stiff. It feels like um, they're brittle. 
they're completely cold to, cold to the touch. You, it chills you to your bone within 30 seconds. Attorney Paul Skorbonik says Niaz Lee was in the freezer for at least four to five hours. It's my understanding from talking to one of the employees that was there with her son that found her that she had completely frozen by the time they found her to the floor. He says that wasn't, however, his biggest discovery during the inspection. First, he says the broken latch on the freezer that allegedly led to Lee's death has already been replaced by management. He adds that new latch also malfunctioned when he handled it. Walking into that freezer, he also learned another key piece of information. There is a lever that you can pull that is supposed to be connected to an emergency system to alert the authorities if you get stuck in there. But he says it wasn't working. Scrabonic claims all he had to do to power it was turn the phone lines on, something he says was never done. And that could have saved Miss Lee's life. So it's not just the handle, it's the just outrageous notion that you wouldn't turn the phone lines on for the most basic life saving device in that freezer. His inspection also revealed a stranger piece of information. For some reason, they had cleaned out the entirety of the kitchen equipment, so there was no stove, no fryer. It was just empty space where you would think there would be a bunch of kitchen equipment, and I have no idea why they did that. When News 10 asked Grabonic why it took someone dying for these facts to come to light, he says he believes it's the culture of people they have in management positions at Turbo Restaurants, LLC. He says after looking at 15 pages of text messages from two former Arby's general managers to the regional manager, he learns the regional manager never responds to complaints. Complain about the freezer, no response. Complain about a robbery that had been there before, no response. Skrbonik says he believes this investigation could save another person's life in the future. This case, if we put it before a jury, I think that they're going to get pretty angry about these facts. And I think that anger is going to turn into sending a message. And I think that message is going to uh, ring throughout the nation. And people are, uh, that own these types of franchises are going to take note. That was Britt LaFosso reporting there. The attorney tells the news to, and he actually sought a temporary injunction to prevent Arby's from making any changes to that freezer before his inspection. Before the hearing, however, an attorney representing the company informed him the handle on the freezer had already been changed. Repeat violent criminals are a big problem in Louisiana and find a public safety leaders discussed new efforts to address the issue. State lawmakers passed a bill to create new requirements for offender tracking systems. Suspects out on bond who tamper with their electronic monitoring device could automatically be put in jail and fined. The goal of the bill is to reduce repeat violent crime. This will give us the location accuracy of a monitored individual with the ability to provide location accuracy within three minutes of a request. The authoring and successful passage of HB 556 demonstrates the strength of unity and unyielding dedication of our community in creating a safer and more prosperous environment. So we're told that a bill banning machine guns, which is also passed through the House and Senate. Now for a check on your local weather forecast for the weekend with meteorologist Heath Morton this morning. Now, here's the live Doppler Storm Team, Chief Meteorologist Heath Morton. It has been hot over the last four or five days with the heat index up around 115 yesterday and today. We have this large area of high pressure over South Texas that will actually extend, expand farther north over the weekend. So that means we'll get even hotter and the storm track has been well north of us. So we've seen a lot of storms this week from uh, Texas into the northern parts of the state, Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle. As a matter of fact, early Friday morning, a widespread wind damage from Shreveport to Monroe over toward Jackson and uh, parts of uh, the western panhandle of Florida. Uh, Pensacola saw about uh, 17 inches of rain. So we've been close to the storms, but still just north of us is this high pressure uh, will even uh, squelch those rain chances even more over the weekend. Uh, rain chances only at about 20%. Temperatures now lower to mid 80s. As we go to the north, there's the cool air feeling like fall, but we won't see that again probably for about three and a half to four months. Uh, lower 80s all across South Louisiana.
Atlanta. So it's been a warm night out there as we go through the day. A 10 o'clock temperature already up to 88 and this model run has been a little below uh, what the actual temperature has been. So 95 here is what it's showing. Could easily be around 99 to 100 with a heat index around 115. Heat index on Friday was around 115. Saturday 115, Sunday 115. Look at that, still 115 on Monday. Comes down a little bit uh, Tuesday, 112. Anything over 105 can get extremely dangerous. So we're going to be in that extreme danger category as we go through the next couple of days. So if you're going to be working outside, try to avoid the hottest parts of the day between about 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. and take a lot of breaks if you're going to be out there. Big thunderstorms over Texas, more of those in the Mississippi and Alabama. But like all week, everything's been moving around us. It's been a pretty hot and dry week. More thunderstorms could develop later today over Texas. Here's future track as we see a lows tonight down in the lower to mid 80s. Maybe a few clouds tomorrow morning for Father's Day into the afternoon, mid to upper 90s heat index around 115. And then as we get through Sunday night, it does show a few showers over eastern Texas, uh, but still most of that should stay away from us. I do expect pretty dry weather going into early next week. It's been breezy over the last couple of days. Southwesterly winds today. 10 to 15 as we go through the day on Sunday, even windier as we'll see a southwesterly wind at about 15 to 20. And that's pretty rare for this time of year unless we have a tropical system nearby. Uh, it's been more like an April or uh, early May type setup with the wind and these storm systems. Uh, but for us, we really haven't seen uh, much rain in the last week or so. 99 dangerous heat, southwesterly winds at about 2 to 6 for tonight. 80 partly cloudy, warm and humid. Southwesterly winds at about 2 to 8 miles per hour. Here's what it looks like over the next seven days. Sunday, uh, 100. Monday, 100. Rain chances 30% Tuesday into Wednesday. If summer begins on Wednesday. It's still going to be hot. Rain chances at 3 and 10. And then showers come back as we go through Thursday into Friday. Have a great day.